The Cybos Talent Accelerator route provides women with growth opportunities to support their progress to senior levels. Those who take part in the STAR program are offered unrivaled education and thought leadership opportunities, meaningful business experiences and collaboration with the global financial community. Well, to discuss the challenges women face getting to boardroom level, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined in the studio by three of this year's STAR program participants. They are Ibiyemi Okanei, who's Head of Trade for Nigeria and West Africa at Standard Chartered Bank, Mary Duncan, who's the Product Manager, Global Transaction Services, EMEA, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Natalia Diaz, she's the Product Manager for Sustainable Finance at Euroclear. So all of you, welcome to Cyboss Television, and thank you for taking the time out to speak to me. It'd be a man, let's start Julia. with you first. When we look at the industry generally, what does it need to do to encourage more women to stay in the sector so that they can get those promotions that will take them to the C-suite? Um, I think um, there has to be a deliberate strategy. Uh, and it's not just um, one thing. Uh, there has to be an array of initiatives that has to drive uh, the agenda. The first thing is that um, there has to be the tone from the top. Industry leaders have to um, focus on this as a priority as an agenda. For example, in Standard Chartered Bank, um, the diversity, you know, the gender diversity agenda is actually driven by the CEO of our corporate um, and commercial institutional banking. And beyond just setting a tone, there has to be uh, set targets um, in the industry, and those have to be measured and public, published to ensure that there is uh, accountability and um, what is being done is visible. Mm -hmm. So that is a key area that has to be focused on. And, and then beyond that, um, there also has to be that um, culture of inclusiveness in every organization. We have to see institutions begin to focus on, on things like flexible working hours um, to support women. We have to see um, the approach to things like maternity and returnship change uh, from what we have at the moment. Um, all the areas that we need to focus on are deliberate planning uh, for career, for women. It has to be specific. There has to be more um, a, a, a deliberate approach to ensuring that women are actually positioned for the top level. Mm. That their programs, for example, the STAR program is, is, is a way to empower women. And that's what we have seen. Um, other areas that you want to look at is also the, the, the hiring practices. Of course. How do we hire? Uh, if you don't hire, then there's no opportunity to promote. Mm. If you don't hire the, the, the women and uh, you, you don't hire them into senior roles, into managerial roles, then you're not positioning them for senior management mm. roles. And, and losing talent as well in absolutely, the process. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and what we're seeing in the ind industry is that um, a lot of institutions are doing the same thing. So that has to significantly change. Mm. It's interesting because you touched on gender diversity and you, you referred as well to what, what your bank is doing, again, taking the initiative from the top and the middle. But overall, is gender improved, uh, gender diversity, it, would you say that it's improving in the financial services sector generally or is it a, a little bit patchy? It depends on where you go to find the islands of good practice. Um, in, in, in summary, I'll say yes. But, at, but the question is, at what pace is it improving? Um, the statistics show that if we continue at the pace at which we're in, we probably are not going to get to 30% in financial services on the board um, globally until 2048. And the question is, is that what we want mm. to see? It's too long a wait, really, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. But, but I'm not undermining um, all the efforts and all the work that has been done so far. For example, um, it's good to know that from 2003, uh, we've moved um, board level female representation has moved from 13% um, to about 20%. But, but that's, that's mm. 10 that's 13 years, sure. actually, 2003 to 2016. That's actually 13 years. That's a long time. Too slow. Very slow. Mm. And the question is, um, what are some geographies doing? Because it's also different uh, when you look at different geographies. You don't want to compare what you have in the likes of Norway with what you have in Japan. Mm, of course. You know, so, so that's different. And then different with institutions. For example, Standard Chartered. We, we decided in 2016 to move the representation on the board beyond 30%. And as at end of last year, 
female representation on our board was about 33%. Mm. So in that, that's, that, that's, that's an achievement in three years. So, so all that show there's yeah. an improvement, but the key message is it, it has to be accelerated. It's the pace and where there's a will, there's a way. And I want to bring in Mary at this stage because look, what Ibi Amy has been talking about, it, it's huge and clearly there is some progress, but as she said, it's the pace. But some of this can be addressed quite simply. So given that in mind, what are the changes, simple changes that organisations can make to encourage a better work-life balance? Because if you crack that one, everybody benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for me, a great place to work is somewhere where employees feel supported. They feel that the bank or the institution recognises that we are human and that we do have a life outside of work. So I think, you know, if we take care of our people, then they are naturally better equipped to take care of the clients. So it really is simple things, you know, championing, flexible working, ensuring that you know, your employee benefit schemes you know, have um, you know, the tools to help you to manage that, that work-life balance. You know, so shared parental leave, and also uh, Bank of America you know, gives supported leave for those who need to take care of a significant other, and that for me has been something that you know, I have had to do in my career, mm. and that has driven you know, loyalty to the brand, to the organization. Because they're they working with you, yeah, and you absolutely. feel comfortable approaching them about absolutely. your issues. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, and that's quite important, because it, it touches on a point which I was going to raise in the, the next question I wanted to put to you, which is about organizations demonstrating their commitment to diversity and giving women the opportunities to develop and showcase their talent. But from what you said just now, it really is establishing that line of communication between the worker and the company. Once it's there, and you know it yeah. works, these changes, these, these goals, these aspirations can happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we need to see diversity as part of the DNA of the organization. It needs to be part of the strategy. It needs to be part of you know, the way that we can, we can see growth. And I think we need to support women to be present at every level of an organization because I think then we can truly reflect the clients and the communities that we serve by empowering our, our people and our women especially to, to be represented. And I think lastly, you know, it's great to be part of the STAR program. This is a fantastic initiative and I really hope that we're gonna see more of these types of initiatives coming through in financial services to really support this journey, mm. um, you know, towards that greater gender. Well, diversity. you guys are very determined, so I can <laughs> see that happening very soon. But Natalia, whenever we talk about gender diversity, it's often dismissed as simply a women's issue, which is pretty exasperating for those of us who are actually trying to say, look, this is something which we should all be concerned about. So, you know, how should we perceive it? Should we see it as a women's issue or as an important step from which everybody benefits? I think that it, companies need to look at it as a strategic issue because I think Ibiemi alluded to this. Companies that are diverse have proven results and it does make a difference in your bottom line at the end of the day. Uh, to have that diverse point of view that if you have somebody, uh, everyone around the room or around the board looking the same with the same point of view, um, then it's very difficult to look at a problem in a different way or in a creative way. And so having diversity provides that additional strategic uh, uh, mindset that you otherwise might not have. And I think that it becomes more of a, a company-wide issue and not a women's issue. Mm -hmm. I think that companies that are more diverse have proven to bring an additional uh, 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 spark mm. uh, or an additional idea to the market. And it acts as a magnet as well, I suppose, because again, yeah. it brings in that power, that, that talent that you, you need to power the organization. And I think that women today are actually looking at companies that are diverse and that reflect, reflect their values at the end of the day. And so uh, having that is also a way to attract talent and retain talent in the industry. Mm. And what about the role of mentorship and sponsorship in bridging the gender diversity gap? Why do you think that those components are very important? I think that uh, we often talk about mentorship, but one of the key themes that came out this week in the STAR program is the importance of sponsorship. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why I'm able to attend Cybos this year. It's not something that I would otherwise be able to join were it not for the STAR program. 
that you know is sponsoring actually uh, talented young leaders in the organization to attend such a you know meaningful event, the networking opportunities, and I think having that sponsor in the organization that will vouch for you when you're not in the room, and I think that's the key difference because there's an element of risk there, right? Where they, they're putting their names on the line to say, I think that this young leader or this young woman deserves to be there because she can bring uh, something to the table that we might not otherwise get. Mm. And I think that across our careers, it's important not only to have good mentors, but to also find good sponsors that will put their names on the line to vouch for you so that you can get ahead. And it's not just women, it's men as well. As well. Yeah. Okay, I'd, I'd like to get in a time available brief response to a question which I'd like you all to share. And this is what would you change to make a career in financial services more attractive, not just to you, but also to your peers? So starting first with you at the Amy, what would you do to uh, the changes that you would make um, in financial services to make the, the sector more attractive to, to other people? I think the first thing um, I'd like to focus on is, is role modeling. Uh, because I think one of the critical areas is the fact that when you don't see people ahead of you, you end up with a syndrome of it's only me. Mm. So when you have more role models, then you, you get a sense of I can do this. I can stay in the industry. You get experience from people who have um, stayed, who have... Um, who didn't have to opt out because of um, f family or uh, uh, societal issues, um, who have been able to rise um, beyond where they are and to assume very senior roles. We had um, a session earlier this morning um, and we were spoken to by one of the mentors and she gave her experience about uh, how she had um, taken through having family and how she's been successful. So I think role modeling is key. and. Um, Increasingly, we, we are having um, senior role models, uh, female in the industry, and I think uh, we, we have a number of them, even in CEO roles uh, uh, in Standard Chartered Bank. So th sure. there's that opportunity to see, um, you can actually get to senior executive and c suit level Right, you know, and, and, and still be so the, uh, successful and, and on a border home front as well as Okay, uh, so the importance of role models in organizations. Mary, from your perspective, that question, what would you change to make a career in financial services more attractive for you and your peers? So I think, you know, gender diversity is not just an issue affecting financial services, it's a, a far broader issue. And I think we just need to shout a bit about change because yeah, this industry is rapidly changing at the moment. Um, you know, it, we're seeing companies diversifying into financial services that you know never played in the space before, and that is bringing in more perspective, which is driving innovation, and it is driving diversity in. So I think we need to be, you know, shouting about you know the ev evolution of the industry, and I think we need to be going out, you know, and to pick up with some of you, the things you were saying. If you, you know, let's talk to girls at a young age as financial services let's us lead the way forward let's you know empower girls give them the support the capital what they need in school and university to push forward and that I think will encourage more young women and young people to want a career in financial services and technology. Empowerment with Natalia, particularly getting to, to young girls, is, is that what the change that you would make to make a career in financial services attractive? What, what would your role, your position be on that? I think it's important for young women to see somebody like them at the top. And so when you see that and you have that kind of role model, uh, then, then you say, oh, this could be something that I could achieve as well. And so we have a number of trailblazers already in the industry, but the more we get uh, women at the top, the more it will encourage even younger women uh, to say that this could be something for me as well. Okay, well, all three of you are inspirational, and I wish you the very best in, in your journey to make those changes. I have a feeling that you're going to succeed, but it'd be Amy, Mary, and Natalia. Thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV. It's been an absolute pleasure interviewing you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.